Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Finally finished working, so I can finally do <laughs> go back to making my regular videos. So what's today's video going to be? Obviously, if you read the title, we're going to be going through all of the events that are going to kind of be coming into the game in 2023 for the game. Thankfully, we are on the NA version of the game, so we are two years behind, depending on who you asked. Either that's a terrible situation or not some, something to be thankful for. But for someone who likes to save like me, it is a great situation because it means I can look at all the units and then plan accordingly. Now, I haven't actually had time to think of my plan. That's probably going to come in a separate video about how I want to break stuff down. But for people who just want to generally know what to expect in 2023, that's what this video is going to be. Um, so yeah, if you end up liking the video, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel a whole bunch. And now we're going to get right into it. Before we get into it, I will say... I am going to end up accidentally saying the characters. Two char There's a couple characters in here, mainly the ones you see here. Their true names are hidden. Everyone knows Morgan. But then the knights, the fairy knights' names are supposed to be hidden. Um... I'm going to end up mentioning them just because it's <laughs> this video is going to be extremely long and I'm going to end up mentioning them because they show up a lot in this year. So if you don't want to know what their real names are, then feel free to leave. Just leave the video now. I figured I, f I should say it now before anything else. It's not going to go into any actual story details because I don't know what happens in the story because I don't look at it on purpose. But, you know, for people who don't want to be spared for that, I'll allow you to slit to leave the video. <laughs> So, alright everyone, let's get into it. So, just to show it, this is what they were like in 2020. So, end of the year here. January is obviously the big month where Muramasa drops. This is who everyone's been waiting for. Everyone made memes about it. Everyone's like, yes, let's go. Muramasa, and he's also going to be showing up in NA, which is different from how it was on JP. He's also going to be here with Pity. Um good chances now here's the funny thing they have actually changed the banners a little bit like the christmas banner lost their rotating uh four star but we should be able to keep the same force the five stars that we got from this banner over here so that means that for the people who care mainly mainly whales because there's no way in hell you've been this prepared for actually there's probably a decent amount of people who have prepared at least 900 saint quartz for muramasa at this time but it's going to be a guaranteed pity on him if you do end up getting him and he's definitely worth it for the power alone but also because he is a fan favorite character um we also have if you don't care about muramasa or you get him early we do also have a bunch of other dudes you could potentially use it on not saying that you should just saying it is an option to you Next, then comes, this was, this is a rough year. Oh my god, I just suddenly remember. They followed that up by having a Saber, Saber Wars rerun. This might show up early on NA, depending on when does Christmas for us end, and if there's some time that they need to kill. Uh, Saber Wars, too. This one's pretty obvious with the big ones here. It's Space Ishtar. Uh, it's a Rin face, so there's nothing really more I need to say here. But yeah, that's the start. This is a good way to start the year because it's going to let you know that it's going to be a rough ass year going, going forward for this. But yeah, other than that, it's pretty simple. Little Big Tengu is the new event, which is the four, the free four star is, uh, I forget her name just because I haven't seen Kichi Hogan. There you go. She'll be here. She is. And then the summoning campaign for this one is Ushi. Here we see her in her, uh, Avenger form. More clothes. As Ushida, except for in this final one. <laughs> I was gonna say, a lot of clothes up until the end here, and then it, it all seems to disappear, but it's the opposite of our Ushi, where uh, Ushi progressively gets more clothes as time goes on. But yeah, that's all of uh, January. I almost completely skipped over all of February. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get anything for this one related to the memories. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really seem. Uh, other than Saber being the main one, it's not the biggest deal. Holy Grail front at two Brute. I don't remember if there's anything. Oh, Altera and Romulus. I can't remember. Did they fix the Romulus bug? I assume they did. But there you go. Romulus comes back right here. Valentine's Day 2021 featuring a character that is from... I forget. But it's Karen. I remember she is from Fate's Day Night, but it's not actually Night. It's like the... The other one, the one that follows up, the one that has Angry Man Manju in it and stuff like that. 
Don't know a lot about this. But either way, Karen shows up for Valentine's Day. Yay. Next year after that is the one that I'm looking forward to, which is the best at one. <laughs> but I'm sure there's plenty of Karen fans who were waiting for this specific day. I remember her... Actually, funny enough, I remember when she was announced, there was a lot of people who were, like, down on Karen because it was another pseudo-servant, but... I think those are just the people who are always down whenever they announce a new pseudo servant for anything. She's supposed to be Cupid, but was anyone really all that hype for the idea of Cupid? Nah, I don't think so. They're it's it's a you know it's a little suspicious. But if you were, feel free to tell me if you were. Say is also coming back for a holiday, Happy Hot Valentine's Day rerun, which is nice. I like Say. 23 million downloads campaign is maybe the easiest to skip of a downloads campaign we've ever had because it has male Arthur here who is the worst he is the canon Arthur and he is also I think the worst Arthur in the game even post strengthening let's see this is pretty good mm. I'm, 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 I'm still calling him the worst Arthur after looking at that but either way he does have his fans he is, there are people who really like prototype even though nothing from prototype has ever come out but yeah that looks February not too bad one new unit that's a big one for sure for certain people then some reruns which are nice even for Arthur specifically it's a nice to have a rerun for characters that aren't even that strong um, because there are people who really like them and it's always nice to have more chances of getting at them even if uh, you don't win it speaking of characters I don't like slapstick museum featuring uh, Shiro Emiya somehow no what's his real name Shiro Kotamine something like that this guy the guy from APOC the guy I, re I just really don't like he's getting a special little costume here Voyager also is also coming back which is pretty nice because I like Voyager um, but nothing too big I would say here unless you're a, a huge ass fan of this guy right here I'm a Kasu that's his real name all right I remembered it there we go perfect but yeah he comes back he comes up back with a fantasy phantom uh phantom thief outfit which is nice caldea boys collection 2021 is there any big uh good art here i'm trying to see twitter presence no wait hmm Mm, none of these man arts really speak out to me the way previous ones have. Some say... Mm, mm, that's all I'll say for now. Maybe it's different when I actually see him in there. But next, we had the class-based summoning campaign, which you just should not summon on. <laughs> the, the end of March is the Akihab Akihabara Explosion. Featuring the five star I forgot existed because I don't really mention her a whole bunch, Galatea. She's got the big old pants. That's all anyone ever remembers of her is that she got some big old pants. Yeah, this is I think the the one big dud of this year because there are some really good units this year, but this one is definitely one of the new servers where it was just like, I don't know, man. I I just don't know. I don't see anything posted about her ever <laughs> she's a triple berserker with an arts np always a good sign of anything uh, even though technically speaking super orion is three busters with an arts np but his is a support one that buffs up his attack to an insane value the fate freedom order release campaign we're obviously not going to get that but we'll get something fun for april fool's day hunting quest spring and full blossom summoning campaign this is just an excuse to get Tamamo and uh, Hokusai out there for everyone to potentially summon on. It's also good to keep in mind a lot of these are pity, pity pitiable, which was not the case in JP, so it's something. It's definitely something to think about from time to time. Strengthening quests, the campaign here. Oh man, fuck me. Oh fuck. Oh fuck, I forgot. Fuck. Fuck. Oh man, I. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, Quest is my favorite servant, and I kind of want to, I, mm, I'm going to look away from this. <laughs> She's, I'm going to look away from this. I'm, this is a problem for future me, but I really love Quetz. So if there's an excuse to potentially get her pitiable, which was not the case if I had known ahead of time. I would have saved up 900 SQ easy. Fuck. Anyway, I'll deal with that later. Don't worry about it. 
April. We end April with the Grail Live. Um, the main summoning campaign for this one is pretty easy. It's Miss Crane, who is a very interesting support servant who mainly buffs dudes who wear costumes. And thankfully, in this event, you get just a shit ton of costumes, I think. Uh, costume dress. Yeah, there's like, yeah, there's one for, basically only three of them didn't make The Okita one, the Skahawk one, and the Jalter one didn't make it, but everyone else got theirs. You got Kat, you got Uriel, you got Jian, you got Ushiwakamaru, we got Nero with her like fifth one, Shuten, Hassan, Serenity, Maeve, Naito, Helena, Altera, and Mashu. All very nice. And now we have May. I think May is the one where there's just not much. Holy Front Grail, my Super Camelot, which I think is a summoning campaign that does not feature Merlin, but it's okay. It features the knights, which is okay. Not the biggest thing, but sure. Summer rerun happens right around here, but again, it's a little bit screwy when it comes for us, because stuff is a little bit weird and out of order, but this is an another way for you to get, uh, to try again and try and get Summer Kiara, Ilya, Brunhilda, Abby, Tomoe, Murasaki, and Fujino, who shows up in here, because Fujino was actually in the story near the end of the summer. Spoilers for that, but yeah. And then also the men, the Blue Eyes White Dragon, Holder himself, Kaiba, Longling Wang, and Emiya. Uh, yeah. Thankfully for me, not much I have to worry about, because this year I did very good. So I don't have to summon at all. Not one bit. Woo! Yay me. Avalon Le Fay pre-release campaign. Was there anything related to this in here? Summoning campaign? Yes! Little Da Vinci. Little Vinch. Um, damn, I really want Da Vinci, but I think I'm good on as far as arts as far as arts dudes are concerned, I think I'm good. But it would be nice to kind of have her. Not gonna lie, I would kind of want her. Next, we got obviously the Lost Belt release, which I think is, a, yeah, the summoning campaign here. We have, all right, get ready for it. We have Morgan, we have Barg, and we have Babosif. And then summoning campaign, we have two. We have Castoria coming back. Oh god, that's a, that's a, that's a danger for sure. Obviously, this is the big one that a lot of people are summoning for. I definitely am planning ahead for this one. My big wants from this are obviously Barg and Morgan, and if I get Babo Sif over here. I'm saying her name completely wrong. I think people just call her Sif. If you know how to say her name, feel free to tell me. I will gladly learn how to say it. But every time I keep saying it, I keep wanting to pronounce it like Babu Frick, which is not not how you say ba So that's why I call her Babu Sif, because I, she kind of reminds me of Frank. But anyway, Star Wars, there we go. So, Bobo Sif over here with Barg and Morgan, and this is a big one. Uh, and also, Castor gets, I think, his strengthening around this time where he just turns into a fucking menace. So this is a good way to get him MP5, which I'm looking forward to doing. Um, Castoria is Castoria. If you missed out on Castoria, boom, you get to go for Castoria again. <laughs> good job. Man, that's crazy that they released it right around the sixth year. And then, of course, we have uh, the sixth year release, which, funny enough, the... <laughs> This is the Summoning Campaign 3, which features uh, Lancelot, Fairy Knight Lancelot, Perso and Percival, whose real name is Mulusane, I think? Milly. Click the spoilers. No. 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 Miliko. Oh man, I don't know why people. Milusane, there we go. I'm so stupid. It was right there. Or Fairy Knight go uh, Lancelot. Next, we have the six year anniversary, the commemorative campaign. Which is the start of it, where they're like, okay, summoning campaign, you can summon for Sherlock Holmes, everyone's favorite. Put him in there. It's just another dude to summon for in this year. We got the Severn Strengthening Quest. I don't remember if they have any summoning campaign related to this, but they don't. It's probably because this is related to uh, the six year anniversary. And the force for the six year anniversary, the summon unit is. Boom. Koyanaska of Light, aka Veach. The assassin support for Buster. This is the beginning of the Buster, the new startup Buster era. This is where you charge one ally's NP gauge, reduce their skill cooldown by two, which is why you suddenly all of want. Funny enough, there's two ways to play Berserker now. There's one way which uses Vich and who uses Oberon, and then there's another one that uses Morgan and you take advantage of her ability, which gives 
charge one and all you do is give 50% NPs to all your dudes and then you just fucking wreck town with it. And you don't need any of this other stuff where it's like 50% and all that other. You don't need that. You just need pure fucking beatdown. And that's another way to definitely run it. But it's more options for what you need to do, basically. But Vich is definitely one that comes to mind for in terms of if you're into classic buster memes and she's got your memes coming for you for sure. Uh... But yeah, that's anniversary, and that's another big day. And then we have the conclusion campaign. No, I forget. Is this when they... Yes, this is when they bring... No, this is where they bring out Oberon. And here we see the return of Babu Sif and Barg, who both return here, which is the fastest unlimited. They are actually limited. They are story locked, which is a fancy way of saying limited. But you wouldn't think it based off the way Fago constantly brings them back. Almost like they knew they made a mistake making them that way. And hey, did you miss out on Morgan earlier? Congratulations, you can go for Morgan again because they gave her multiple banners in a single year. She's the fastest returning berserker. Um, the fastest returning berserker. She got another rate up in the time that it took Arjuna Alt. I think she has like four at this moment um arjuna altar is on his second so just to let you know the disparity in that it's pretty crazy in theory you could skip their first original banner save everything and see how you do summoning for vich and oberon depending on how your priority i'm not going to tell you how to summon i'm not going to tell you how to live your life but i'm going to tell you right now if you're someone who's really just interested in the big meta dudes that's probably the smart move if you're someone who doesn't kind of give a fuck then congratulations just go for morgan on her first banner and if you fail there just boom try it again here um yeah whichever way you want to go for it man i'm not gonna tell you how to live your life i can tell you i can suggest you that it'd probably be best to wait uh there's also no mm, this was a weird year because again this is the pandemic years uh where Pandemic was in full swing, so they kind of brought her back, I think, mostly because they didn't have much to do. So they were just like, well, to be fair, the real reason they brought him back is that this is when the story hit. And when the story hit, when they first originally released Lost Belt 6, not a lot of people could finish the story because it was gated. So they didn't get to know the characters. But then once the 6 was fully out there and they could experience it themselves, they were like, we love these characters, please bring them back. And as such, Morgan is probably one of the most top servants, along with Barg and Sif, and also Millicent as well. Like, almost everyone, and Oberon, all the dudes from Lost Belt 6 just did crazy numbers because of how well-liked they were. So, something to keep in mind. Man, that's crazy, though. It is still crazy that they got returned so fast, but they're just that popular, to be honest. September! Here we are now. We're here in summer. Yeah, that's right, all that fucking... <laughs> boss battle of summons by the way you're gonna have to go through all that and then boom we reach summer oh my god thankfully i think this summer gives a free little bitch actually that's a good reason for me not to summon for the other bench because i'll eventually have my da vinci right here and this one's pretty fun because this summoning has of course okita featuring rengoku as her little sword guy anastasia and vi and charlotte as a caster here Summoning, you got Achilles and Magic Mendicardo. I think, uh, Black was this the year they gave Blackbeard a costume dress? So, yeah, chances are that's why he's not uh, featured on here. So, you only get these two on here. Summoning Campaign 2, which features Karna, Kaneus, and Seishonanagan as a berserker. Funny enough, for this one, I, oh, I fucking forgot that actually Kama was on here. I don't think they ever re-ran this event, by the way, so this is your only chance of getting <laughs> Summer Da Vinci. I completely forgot that. Did they rerun it? When? This year? So they didn't... It's not next year. Okay, so they skip a year. So you either do it now... No, did they only rerun the banner, or was it the actual event? I'm almost positive the event has only been here once. It's only, it is Summer, Chaldea Summer Adventure. I want to say this is the one where it's only one. I don't think we ever got a rerun. We got a rerun of the banner, but never of the actual, uh, um, of the banner, but never the actual event itself. We're still waiting for that to come back. Because now everything's all screwy with how things are going. 
Why the fuck was he returned? Oh yeah, I guess Doman's also coming back here if you missed out on Doman. <laughs> I completely forgot that Doman was featured on this. What the fuck was this year? This was definitely the year where they were just like, we just want money, please. Please give us all your money. Anything you have left over, give us the money now. Uh, as my brother looks for that, I'm running under the assumption that this only got one. Actually, I could look right here. Okay. I can look next year. And I can see for July, June, August. It was only the banners. The event itself never came back. So, uh, I don't know when it's going to come back either. It's another one of those events that are lost to the ether at the moment. Uh, Santa Carna eventually came back, so there's hope. But then it could also be like Samba Quetz, where it just disappears forever and you're never given a reason why. And then some dudes start making up fake rumors. So there we go. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, definitely a crazy ass gauntlet of dudes to kind of summon for. The interlude campaign is here. I don't think there's a there is a summoning campaign related to the. Oh, thank God, it's only Okita Alter and Van Gogh though. But of course, Van Gogh. Damn, I do kind of also want Van Gogh. But at at some point, you have to count your losses. I really don't think I'll be able to get Van Gogh. Melty Blood. This is when it was announced. Saber's game entry, this is when she was announced, so where chances are not getting that. Um, which is really funny. Maybe by the time we get the around here, Multi Blood will have announced more dudes from Fago to be in it to make a piss off the seven Tsukihime fans that are really hyped for Multi Blood. But we'll see, huh? We'll see what the year plans out for us. Next we have the Halloween comeback campaign, which I don't think has a summoning banner. It just has Liz. What more do you need but Liz? This is also your chance to get all the free Liz's. Yay, they all come back in a simple little trilogy thing. The second Blu-ray DVD release, the summoning campaign, has Erish Coggle. And since they don't ever seem to want to print a new version of Erish Coggle, this is the only way you're going to be able to get her. So, I actually don't know if we're going to be getting this, because <laughs> Fake Grand Carnival... I don't know how the current status of it for it is over here, but... Uh, yeah, that's a little bit funky. Maybe they'll find some excuse to give us a free Irish goggle summoning event or something. Halloween 2021, which features Cinder Lizza, as you can see right here. Summoning Campaign, which features everyone's favorite Jacques de Molay. The woman version, the man version, you're going to have to play the arcade version. It's okay, we got the better version. And then we have Zenobia, who is, I'm afraid of actually showing the full outfit, because I'm not sure if I'll just get demonetized straight out. But hey, we'll work on that more when I have to talk about her more. I really want Zenobia, so I'm going to be trying to get her in here. And that help works out because this is also a Halloween event, so that means there's going to be Halloween-related CEs. Look at that. You got Kitty Jack, you got the hyped-up uh, Shakespeare, and then you have Little Red Altera here with a very detailed deer eating apples. That's a big-ass apple. The apple, actually, are apples supposed to be that big? Yeah. That fox is really happy, though. Really, <laughs> the, the fox is really happy about her eating that apple. <laughs> All right, next, next we got. I don't know way we get anything really to Apocrypha. Okay, this is a summoning campaign that features all the dudes from Apocrypha on it. I'm gonna be real with you. I don't think we're gonna get this. I don't. I don't know if we even already have it, but I don't know. One less thing to worry about in October. Next, we have the return of the Guda Guda rerun which features Himiko returning, the 24 million download campaign, which is your next shot of potentially getting Ibuki, the Saber version, but also we have Kentoki, and we have Suna. Shout out to that one person who said, I'm a big Suna fan, I hope you were able to get him when he originally came out. But if you didn't, you have him right here. Also, for some reason, he is way smaller than both Ibuki and Kentoki on this art. They just decided to make him awkwardly small, but okay. The main quest, Clear Campaign Part 2. I don't think there's any banner related to this, but just to be sure, not, no, not really. Uh, the Guda Guda Close Call 2021, which features, on a summoning campaign, I believe it is Azuma no Okoni, Okoni? I don't remember, it's the puppet girl. That's what I really, really remember her for. This is also your chance of getting Izzo and Mori again, because they are limited three stars. And then Oda Nobunaga, who is a swimsuit unit, who is super limited because she is a swimsuit. And then we have Summoning Campaign 2, which features Rayoma, 
and then features a lot of the other dudes on here. Demon King, Berserker, uh, Nobunaga, Okita, Soji, who is the uh, summer version of Okita, and then of course Izo and Mori over here. Um, oh man, this is a... Uh, I, really li I really like Ryoma. I would kind of want someone on this, but I'll have to think about how everything is looking by the time we get here. It's one of those things that's like, I don't know how much I'm going to have left over after summoning through all of summer and everything else. It's hard to imagine having anything left over. And then finally, we close out the year uh, with some of this stuff. We have the Christmas 2021, as you can see here. We skipped Santa Carna. We will not have Santa Carna this year unless NA decides to say that was really dumb what JP did and gives us Santa Carna. Summoning Campaign 1, which is Thieker. This is the weird one. This was the weird. This is why this never came back. I was like, why? Because this event also never come came back. Um, Christmas 2021. And the reason is because Scotty was the one who was the main banner unit this year. And the free unit was, of course, uh, Martha. So this is your really your only shot of getting Martha Santa at the moment. Benny's also on it, as is Memia and regular Martha. But man, I forgot that this is... Oh man, this also has a really good Shirazade Thousand Nights CE. It's really good CE. I don't know what it does, it just looks really nice. Yeah, it's nice art. She's in like a giant glass of a, a, a cherry drink of some kind. I don't know. Next... And we basically close out the year with the Tunguska Sanctuary featuring everyone's favorite cat mom. Uh, a, a, a Russian name I cannot pronounce at all. Dabrnanya Nikotichyota. And then we have Taigon Wang, who is the guy who reminds me of the dude from Genshin that I can't remember at the moment. Um, the one who throws pillars at dudes. I think this guy also throws pillars at dudes. He looked, no, he's the fishing man. That's right. I remembered I looked at his sprites. I'm like, no, this is the fishing man. He's a man, so obviously he has his uh, big supporters. Zhang Yu, that's the guy from Genshin. Zhang, there you go, okay. I figured it out. And then, of course, New Year's, which is the thing we have to always think about when we close out a year. New Year's of next year is, of course, oh man, this is, a, this is another year where it was like weird. Uh, we have the summoning campaign, the Happy New Year, which features the Koyanaska of Darkness, aka Vich, but this one is the evil one. The light is supposed to be the one that's not a jerk, and this is the one that was kicking foe and trying to kill us throughout all the lost belts and stuff like that. So yeah, that's kind of what this year is going to be looking like. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty rough. I'm not gonna lie. It's a, in terms of summoning, it's really. There's like a stretch of it where it's just like, oh my god, it's just like non-stop. It's like an entire two months. It's almost three months? Is it almost three months? Yeah, it's pretty close to three months. <laughs> of just non-stop like, oh my god, this is just... I've been starting basically from June. You don't really have that much time. And then when you consider all the other units that are also being released, some of them who are niche, some of them who are... Um, popular characters and stuff like that like the only one that's like a big one that's the easiest skip in the world is probably this one uh the one with featuring galatea just because i think galatea is not even like yeah i think she's not even limited i don't think so let me let me look up just to be sure i'm pretty positive she's not limited she is not limited there's no reason to summon on this banner there's absolutely zero reason to summon on this banner <laughs> but anyway in terms of the other stuff, we got the download campaigns and stuff like that. We have other things to look at. You'll get stuff along the way. I don't think we get a ticket this year. What is something that is kind of worth looking at is actually looking at the G uh, GSSR real quick. It's kind of a quick overview of a lot of the banners that are coming out this year. But the GSSR for this year is... The two one of them this year is the Lucky Bag Summoning. This one is the one that is based off of... Let's see. Five stars will be put among the one of the featured image. The banner's class and period. So it kind of goes like... Yeah... Let me see. Yeah, these are the, the basic rows of the dudes you can summon on. I think it's divided by year. Yes, it is in fact divided by year. Uh, year and class, I want to say. So it's like... 
this this one features I think all of the caster writers and stuff like that and berserkers. So it has Ushi, it has Castoria, it has Morgan, it has Karen, it has Miss Crane. Honestly, if you end up skipping Miss Crane, Karen, Morgan, and Ushi, and somehow Castoria, this is like the craziest, like just instant win on this one. Then we have this one which has Summer Kiara, um, Van Gogh, Himiko, Mermasa. Abby, Melisane, uh, Asshole, and Ibuki. Then we have here, this one which has Voyager, Space Ishtar. This one might actually be the craziest one. Uh, Voyager, Space Ishtar, uh, Summer Musashi, Da Vinci, um, I forgot her name right now. Forgive me, sometimes it's hard to remember names on the fly. Um, Summer Artoria. And then we have next here, this one's pretty nice too. This one has Sarah Astolfo. This one has Roma, this one has Sai, and this one has uh, Super Orion. A 1 in 4 chance of Super Orion is usually enough odds for most people to go for it. Uh, this one's also insane because it's a 1 in 4 chance of Arjuna Altar. Arjuna Altar, uh, Casters, not Caster, that's not his name. Uh, Wavers, um, Reigns, there you go, boom, I remembered, Case Files. Reigns, Mursa, Shikibu over here, and then Kama as well. Pretty good banner for here. And then we have another one which features Summer BB, The Mothman Prophecies, Benny Enma, um, Nobu, Jean, and uh, King Porotia all in one. Next we have Ivan, Semiramis, Scotty, Nero, and Summer Alter Saber. And this one features Kaiba, Abby, or Chicago, Hokusai, um, Sherlock Holmes, and Okita Alter. This one features Cleopatra, Merlin, the Pickle Man, King Hassan, Ilya, regular Kiara, Da Vinci, Big Da Vinci, Melt, and a Mysterious uh, Heroine X Alter. And the third one, which feature, features. Um, Murasaki, uh, Ishtar, um, Arthur, Summer Arthur, Summer Saber Arthur, Old Man, uh, <laughs> Summer Tomomo, sorry it's Moriarty, I just wanted to say Old Man, and then number two which feature, features Raiko, we have Iskandar, we have Gene Alter, we have Mysterious Heroine X, we have Kintoki, we have Shooted, we have Quahahahaha, Nantes, and we have um, Kotomine Shiro, Shiro Kotomine, aka I don't remember your name at the moment. I'm sorry, I'm very tired still. And then we have for the first one Skahawk, Gilgamesh, uh, Void Shiki, um, Blade Nero, no, Wedding Nero, Bride Nero, there we go, Okita, and shout outs to the people who reminded me that the quick single target quick servant was Okita that I was thinking of or thinking, forgetting of. <laughs> and Brunhilda. There we go. Ah, oh, man. So that's the GSSR that is specifically around um, the anniversary. Now, the one that's coming around New Year's, I'm just going to make a separate video on because that'd be just too much and I've already said a lot in this video. But yeah, that's basically what you can expect this year. It's a pretty crazy year. It's going to feature a lot of thinking. <clears throat> When I originally made making my plan, I completely fucking forgot that there was a potential of me getting Quetzalcoatl on Pity. It's not something I was really thinking of at the time. And it does kind of change things, if I'm being 100% real with you. But, hey, we'll wait and see on that one. <sighs> yeah, I'll definitely wait and see on that one. And we'll get a lot of other sync quartz as well. I have to tally up that and see how much sync quartz and stuff we're getting. And then figure out my savings and stuff like that and kind of look at where I am I'm at at the moment. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very mu much for watching if you made it this far. I appreciate all the support you guys give me. There's been a lot of support on the Fugo videos, which I appreciate. Um, it's always nice to kind of get um, support in anything you do. And it seems like a lot of people find these helpful, which I'm glad for. I'm not... I'm not saying I'm the greatest, I still need to improve in a lot of areas and I'm always looking to ways to improve, um, but for the people who I am able to help, I'm glad I'm able to help and I'm able to, even with all the rough pre even though with all the rough edges I have around me and how I present stuff, the fact that there's still helpful stuff in there makes me happy. So 
shout outs to you guys. And that's the end of the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out, and happy grinding on uh, Christmas. I need to go catch up. Peace out. Till next time.